Hey guys, trying this again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've done that probably a million times. I just talk on and on and nobody can hear me. So let me know if you can hear me now, if you are even still here. I am like obviously way overconfident in my setup. Like it's just going to work, <laughs> which clearly it's not. So I will wait until someone says they can hear me and then I will keep, and then I will go on. Let me just ask, can you hear me now? Like one of those Verizon commercials. Let's see. Can I hear myself? Can anybody hear me? Is anyone here? Oh, there, I can hear me. Great, you guys can hear me. <laughs> Perfect, thanks, sorry about that. I got a new camera and so, um, yeah, I guess I just don't have the settings down correct yet. So there's that. Yes, so Tammy, working on YouTube, thank you. Chrissy, I can hear you. All right. Well, thanks for coming back. I will repeat everything I just said. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go ahead and try to share the screen again. And, and I will check in after like a few slides <laughs> to make sure that everyone can hear me. All right. Let's do it this way. Um, since last time I couldn't see the comments when I make it full screen. So what I said before was that these are more, instead of plan with me videos, these have become more like a recap of what I did for the month um, instead of like a true, like let's plan out the next month, which was what my original intent was. But I found that even though I meant to plan, like I can't, um, like it's just not working out, right? Like I thought this was the system that I needed but it's clearly not the system. And I tried out a couple different systems this month and it worked great for YouTube. That's why I was able to put out so much content this month. It didn't work out so great for everything else. So we'll talk about that too, because I'm going to try another different approach to trying to see if this is going to work for, um, for going forward to, for me just to be more efficient. Cause I'm, I'm really, I'm failing to be totally honest at like everything this month. Uh, and so obviously something has to change. I can't just keep going into each month and being like, I'm just going to try harder. Cause I don't think it's a matter of effort. Like things are getting done, but they're not like everything that should be getting done. Uh, so let's just talk about our normal, like what went well. I think it's always good to reflect. And clearly that's like 99.9% .9 of what I enjoy talking about. But I upped my book count to 200, which has helped tremendously like with what with my writing and just learning other genres and learning what works and what doesn't work. And it's actually helped me more as a reader to understand other readers to like signal to myself, like when I'm getting bored, when I'm losing interest, um, when things are really exciting, when characters really make me want to care. Um, it's funny because my friend Jen uh, from college actually said she read my book, which was totally bizarre. Like if you know Jen, she won't even watch TV or movies or anything. She thinks like caring about fake people, like fictional characters is the dumbest thing in the world. She was like, I remember she told me one day, she was like, you know, I've decided I'm never going to read another fiction book or, you know, re watch any more TV shows or movies. I just found myself really upset one day and it was stupid because it was a TV show. But, you know, for me, I mean, Jen's very much like living in the moment. She loves going out in nature, experiencing life, traveling around the world. Um, but for me, I love that whole experience of watching movies and TV shows and books. And so um, so it was kind of funny that she, I think, obviously, to be nice, she had read my book. But in general, I think there are definitely two different types of people. You know, there are people like Jen, and then there are people like me. And I'm definitely more like readers and connecting more with them. And I actually started booktubing. Uh, so because I just love it so much. Uh, so this month was 25 videos, um, 12 for Pretty Fabulous. Uh, I did a live stream. I did 10 videos for the Lisa Latte channel and two live streams over there. So what did I do? If you, in case you missed the videos, here's what I've been doing. Um, I've been recapping the books that I read. I really want to talk all about 
booktube and i used to be all about author tube so if you remember i have the i have many youtube channels i've started and failed at but um i started the the Lisa London channel because I was writing romance and that was my passion. I wanted to help other writers, but I hadn't really written a bestseller or really anything or finished a series. And so um, I was like, well, maybe it's because I don't really like romance. So I had quit doing that in almost like a year and a half ago. I had announced a goodbye video. That's still the very last video on the channel. And it's kind of interesting because the way YouTube works, nobody really watches things in order like Instagram or Facebook. You like see the stream. And because of that, I don't think people know that I've left that channel, right? Like Elvis has left the building, right? And so people keep subscribing. Like I have a higher subscriber rate there than I do on my other channels. And it's because they're looking for advice and they think more is forthcoming. Now, I went over to Lisa Latte and created that channel, which I never even used that pen name, the Latte pen name, but it was because I was so passionate about Cozy Mysteries. I was like, you know, this is really what I want to do and where I want to be. Um, and I just started giving, doing the same thing. I gave writing advice to romance writers and then I switched over to giving writing advice to Cozy Mystery writers. And it came to the point where, you know, people were like, well, when's your book coming out? Well, I'm working on it. Well, am I working on it? or am, just, am I just pushing out YouTube videos? So, so one thing became clear, very obvious, is that I do love making YouTube videos. I like vid being on camera. I like connecting with people in this format. Uh, and, you know, I was passionate about talking about writing. However, I, was, I didn't really have time to write. So I stopped doing that and kind of just took a step back from the channel and mostly just focused on book club. And that's pretty much the only time I ever posted was, was when Courtney and I had a Cozy Escape book club live stream. And then finally, I like discovered recently, I'm like, you know what, I really want to read more books. Like I want to make it an effort, right? It was on my wish list for 2021. Uh, if you remember back when we were doing planning at the beginning of the year. And once I got onto Goodreads, and I really started focusing on that, it like kind of took off, right? Especially once I discovered audiobooks. And because of that, I switched everything around to be a booktube channel. And so I've revived that channel. And I'm still really happy about my decision, even though like I have no subscribers. I think I lost a bunch of subscribers when I made like the announcement that I was switching over. Um, but that's okay, because you know, if they were there for author tube, this isn't the right place for them. I'm only going to talk about books that I love. And I just wanted to do something fun, right? Without having to worry about like, am I going to monetize this? Am I going, right? Like, so, because once you start doing an online business, all of a sudden, every time you want to do something, you're like, can I monetize this? Can I make any money from this? Well, if I can't, maybe I shouldn't even be doing it at all, which is kind of silly, right? Like, so um, I just wanted to do something for fun. So that's basically what this channel is. It's just a fun channel, nothing to do with trying to make money off of it or anything else. Um, Courtney and I brought back, we used to do videos, which I told her, I was like, I just don't have time for. Um, but we brought back the videos where we talk about the book club choices. So book club is really fun. You get to pick which books we read. Uh, and Courtney and I pick two and then each. And so there's four books to choose from. So we brought back the videos where we kind of like hype it up a little and talk about like why we chose those and, um, kind of like try to cajole people into choosing and voting for one of our books. Um, I did a book haul for Kensington. So I've started doing publisher spotlights and there's really not that many publishers that write cozy. So it could be a very small line of videos, but Kensington does a ton of cozies, probably more than any other publisher out there. And so I just went through some top 2021 releases. Um, these were all recommendations from a friend who works there, who edited all of these books. And so she's a really good editor. Uh, and so I knew that these would all be good books. So I wanted to share those. Um, in looking, so the theme for this month was diverse cozies. And in looking for diverse cozies, my friend Tracy had recommended that I read this Vish Puri mysteries, which were Indian mysteries. And these are probably more international and they're a little more dicier than a true cozy. So I didn't suggest it, but I love this series. It was like my favorite series um, that I've ever read. And so I just did a spotlight today, actually a video on that, on those books. As you know, I love TV. Um, unlike my friend Jen, I love watching them. I love talking about them. Um, I never feel guilty about them. And so I put together a list of mystery TV shows. If you like TV, but you're not really into reading, you might want to check those out. These are all current shows. 
Well, they were at the time of the video last week. Prodigal Son just ended like last week and it has not been renewed. It hasn't been canceled, but it's like in a state of flux. I don't, I mean, I'd be surprised if it gets renewed, honestly. Um, but yeah, so these are my, <laughs> those are my TV shows. In case you're ever wondering, like, what does she do in her free time? I watch these shows. Um, this is my publisher, Whiskered Mysteries. So I did a spotlight on them. Uh, and then over here, we have uh, a live stream that Molly and I did. And so this was really surprising to me. So Molly and I, well, the Cozy Escape Book Club that Courtney and I run is really basically just for contemporary cozies, traditional cozies maybe some historical, but definitely no magical like vampires, werewolves, and things like that. Um, we maybe read one a year, and then it's just it kind of has some magical elements. Whereas this new book club, so my friend Molly, I can't remember, oh yeah, I know, my friend Melissa introduced us, and we just started writing virtually together, and she does only paranormal cozies. And I said, why don't we start a paranormal cozy book club? And I kind of thought like it wouldn't really take off and no one was really interested. But the fan base for this one is way stronger than the cozy escape one, which is surprising because that club has been around for a year and a half. And I think we had 20 people RSVP or something like that to the last book club. Whereas this one, the first book club ever next time it has like, it already has like, I think 40 people RSVP'd and it's a smaller base. So I think the fans for Paracozies, in case you're like, I think I want to write a paranormal book. You might want to think about writing a Paracozy. Uh, they're like pretty hardcore. And so our theme was witches. We had a fun kickoff. We gave away 13 books, um, which maybe also helped attendance as well. Uh, but I'm very excited about this new book club and just talking about books in general. Um, so Courtney and I did have our live stream Wednesday. We had good attendance uh, as well. And um, we gave away a free book. And then we talked about the book for next month, which is the Diverse Co Cozy, which is actually a Filipino culinary cozy. So if you like Filipino food or want to read a diverse book with us, you might want to join us for that because that is in May, the end of May is when the book club is. It's always the last Wednesday of the month. And that book that we picked, Adobo and Arsenic, doesn't even go on sale until next Wednesday. So you will not be behind. Um, and there's an audiobook. I've actually already read the book, um, but I'm excited because I can now do the audiobook and compare them. Um, I got 200 new followers on BookBub. So if you don't know what BookBub is, it's just like this book promo site and you can follow authors on there. It's kind of like Goodreads, except it, it's more commercial. So it pushes out actual recommendations to subscribers. And um, I actually, I didn't do anything, to be honest. I just signed up for a book sweeps promo. And then I magically had followers at the end of that. Um, I wrote zero words, which isn't totally true. I wrote like probably 25, 30,000 words this month, but I deleted them all. And so net, I am zero for the month. And so sometimes what happens because context is really high for me for a Clifton strings and the way it manifests in me, most people like need a lot of backstory, but for me, I have to see the entire story laid out like Pretty much sometimes I actually get to the whole end and then I delete the whole book and rewrite it. Um, this time I was able to see at the 30,000 mark, this was not the book that I wanted. And so now I'm going back and rewriting it from scratch again. Um, so that's why I said I'm kind of net zero for the month. Uh, and that was because I really didn't have a lot of time to concentrate on it. So I also like started thinking about writer's block. Like maybe I was blocked and I wasn't able to to really do more things. Oh. There's a question. Uh, Chrissy, what do you mean by vice, dicier, not cozy enough? Oh, so when I said dicier, like if you watch today's video on the Lisa Latte channel, so cozy mysteries are super nice and friendly, um, whereas they are all about like a cute, like hapless sort of happy-go-lucky character, like think Chicklet, like Bridget Jones kind of character. And she's an amateur sleuth and everybody in the town is nice and friendly. Um, and there's cats and there's dogs and, you know, and everybody loves them and there might be some cupcakes. So it gives you like that warm, fuzzy feeling like the Hallmark Channel. When I said it's dicier, this one had like the murder always happens off page on a cozy mystery. And it's usually something like they were shot or they were poisoned. This one was pretty like graphic of a death and like hands and feet missing and, you know, sexual abuse, which never, ever happens in a cozy. So that's why I said it's dicey. It's not really that cozy. 
Uh, Chrissy, also, what's the difference between a paranormal romance that has mystery as part of it versus a paranormal cozy? This is a really good question. Um, so paranormal romance is basically where the romance is the central theme. Like maybe she's solving a crime. Maybe she's starting a new job. Maybe she's moving to Paris, right? She could be doing a ton of different things that cross over into other genres. But like the main reason you're reading it is because you want to read about the romance between her and the guy versus a paranormal cozy mystery means that it's the same character, a witch, a vampire, a werewolf. But in this one, their main job is to solve the mystery. Like maybe they'll date someone here and there, but even if they're on, like there'd never be a scene where they're just out on a date, the date would get interrupted because they see a suspect or the date would be a ruse just so that they could do surveillance on a uh, on another potential suspect that they they think or look for clues somewhere. So that's really the main difference between a romance and a cozy face here. Yeah, I got that. Um, I like Murder, She Wrote because it's less graphic than most murder shows these days. Yes, exactly. My Murder, She Wrote. What else is there? Psych, Monk, pretty much anything you can watch on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel falls into that like happy-go-lucky, cozy uh, area. So safe to watch that channel. All right. So back to our slide. So writer's block. So here's what I tried this month and, and kind of like I said, it kind of worked. So again, I a thousand percent think everyone should take the Clifton strengths test. So my two of my, like my overarching strongest um, strengths are execution, which is surprising since I did not execute a lot this month, but focus and discipline are really high on the list, which means I like being focused on one project and not doing anything else. So if you remember six years ago, or five, has it been six years? No, five years ago. I don't know. The years are just like whizzing by, right? So five years ago when I quit my job, I was like, you know what? I, I can't, I really want to write a book. I can't write a book. I want to start an online business. I can't do anything because I have a job. So I totally quit and then like started pursuing another activity. So a lot of people you'll hear, and I don't believe this at all. They'll say, you know, I, um, I did it as a side hustle on nights and on weekends and in the mornings. And like, I'm not built like that, right? It is not in my nature to do that. I know other authors who are like, I work on the book while I'm on the subway or while my kids are at soccer practice, right? I can't do that. And so, and it's because I have a lot of focus discipline where I don't like doing like multitasking. I'm also not um, adaptability and being flexible and kind of going with the flow are literally at the bottom of the list, which means they are the opposite of strengths or like something I'm not capable of doing. Um, and it's been a big challenge because like Ben is super spontaneous, ready to go at any minute to do whatever, um, especially if it's something fun. And I am not. <laughs> so he'll be like, hey, do you want to do blah, blah, blah? And it'll be like two o'clock and we need to leave at 2.30. And I'm like, uh, no, I've already made plans for the day, which is, and even if the plan is to do nothing, like I cannot make that switch to go do something. So, um, so it's good that, you know, people should just know this about themselves. Whereas the woman who can like type her novel during her kid's soccer practice or during our tornado drill uh, at school, if you're a teacher, is the person that can like run out the door with Ben at 2.30 because they don't. They're just like, whatever, let's just do what comes along in life. Um, so because of that, I tried theme days. So the theme days worked really well for YouTube. That's how I got so many videos out because from morning to night, all I did was film videos. That was it. Nothing else. I edited them and I posted them and they were done. Um, versus when I tried to write a book, a book cannot be written in a day, right? And so it takes a long time. And so because of that, I would start and I would stop. And then, so I did get 30,000 words out, but they really weren't anything that I wanted. And I think if I had written those 30,000 words within a week, then I would have known right away within that week, it wasn't working and been able to switch and then actually have had more words for the month. Um, so the other thing too, is achiever is a high thing on my list, which means I love being busy. I love doing a lot of things. I also love doing stuff on vacation. Like that's my idea of vacation, right? And uh, is to be able to do some work. And so I try to cut down on some of the tasks that I'm doing. And even then it's still like, I, I started this one workbook that I needed to create for a client and 
I thought it would take me two days, but it's actually taking me two weeks. I'm still like working on it now. Uh, and I wasn't able to start. I had another client assignment and I wasn't able to start it because I hadn't finished that first one. And so that person got bumped up. So the thing is, I just have learned that I need to do less stuff. Um, and anything that I know, I think is going to take two days. I should like quintuple that. I don't know if the word's like quadruple twice that or whatever for the amount of time, or I need some downtime. Um, so my next solution is just to do writing only to do seasons. And that's because it takes so long to write a book. I think if I had something else I wanted to do, like let's say I did calligraphy envelopes uh, for weddings again, then you know that could probably work as like themed days. But because it takes so long to write a novel, I'm going to try a season. So for all of summer, and I know nobody wants to hear this, I will be writing. So I don't know. So what that means to you is I probably won't have YouTube videos. Um, I probably won't have, there won't be any more plan with me or recaps for the summer. Um, I've been pretty lax on email as it is. Uh, and then in the fall, my plan is to switch my brain and then just only work on InDesign and anything that you guys need and all these other things just for the fall. Um, so that's the plan going forward. Oh, um, Chrissy. So as someone who used to read a ton of paranormal romance and wants to try a well-written paranormal cozy, what books do you recommend? You know, um, I think that you are really good at world building already if you've read a ton of paranormal. I think for Paracozies, there was a really good book by Nina Harrington. Um, I'm just going to put her name in the comments. Uh, she had written a book very recently on how to write a cozy mystery. And that would like be a really good start for you. Also, there is a course. If you go to the Lisa Latte channel, any video you see inside of there, the very first link is to my very favorite course, which is how to write and sell cozy mysteries. It's perfect because it actually tells you how to market it. And also before you write it, how to make sure you can sell it. Um, so then you don't waste time basically writing something that no one's going to read or no one's going to buy. So uh, I would definitely recommend that too. All right, good questions. Um, all right, so pretty fabulous. I only sent an email out once, even though my plan was to send one out once a week. So, so I'm telling you, I'm not good at these theme days. Um, and I think that's mostly because I really just love ClickUp. And it kind of is, I've noticed about me that I will do things that I love. Like it's almost like it's effortless, if that makes sense, versus things that I like. Um, kind of suffer for the things that I love, like something new and like the shiny object syndrome. I have it just like everybody else. Um, so I really love ClickUp. I think it made me realize that I like doing tech tutorials, which is a little sad because I just finished the Funnel Gorgeous certification on marketing and doing funnels and offers. And I have all these plans to do all these things with it. But quite honestly, I don't love talking about it. I really did the certification because I'm not knowledgeable in that area. And I felt like I was doing a disservice to everybody who is in Planner Academy um, or comes to me for marketing advice because I'm not as well versed as I could be or as others are that are out there. And that's why I did the certification. But at the end of the day, my true passion is really doing the tech tutorials. Um, so have to figure that out as well when I come back in the fall on what to do. So Pretty Fabulous had tons of videos. I still did three videos a week for that. A lot of them are unboxings. Um, I was actually just running out of options. I've realized that it's been two and a half years now. I think I've unboxed every planner that's out there. There's not a lot coming out. So I've been recycling some, which was this cloth and paper, which actually was a huge disappointment um, for this month. So I don't know if she's changing her her model or she's just her business model or this was just a one-off for the month. Um, my friend Jessica has started selling branded merchandise on her channel. So I went through, you know, in case that was something you were thinking about, because I know I thought about that too. Like, am I popular enough? I don't believe I am. But <laughs> like the question is always like, am I popular enough? Like I meant as a general question uh, to sell branded merchandise where people like want my name and my logo on like mugs and t-shirts and tote bags and stuff like that. And so when we kicked off, the, so the Cozy Escape Club, when we made a new logo, they were all like, oh, we really want it on a mug and give us t-shirts and all this other stuff. So 
you know, I was thinking about doing a merchandise store, but honestly, I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to do subscription boxes, like a welcome kit where you get a bunch of branded stuff because dealing with the one off like drop shipping here and there is not something I'm interested in, nor is it something I want to maintain, like in case there's any customer service issues. And honestly, I get excited about doing launches, like putting something special together and pushing out. This will be the first time I do a physical product. I've been talking about subscription boxes a lot, so I know how to do them. I just haven't done it. So I am kind of excited to try that out. Um, Chrissy, oh, I just want to read, not write. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know then. I, you, if, honestly, if you just put in Paranormal Cozies inside of... Um, Amazon, you will find a ton of books inside of there. Um, and then you can also obviously join the book club, the Paracozy book club, and then people have suggestions in there too. Did you review the Hemlock and Oak Planner? Oh, I did not. Thank you, Chrissy. I will check that out. Um, Canada. Uh, oh, the XDR. So the, I did regret. So it's been a year. And I think I told everyone I spent 25, was it 25? like about $23,000, $25,000 on my new computer setup. I love the Mac Pro, but I do have buyer's regret on the monitors. Now, don't get me wrong. I love them. The color's great. Um, it never fades out. Uh, and actually, to be honest, even though I say I regret the purchase and I wish I would have gotten an ultra wide, all of my headaches have gone away since I switched over to this Apple uh, XDR monitor. This is not actual scientific like calculations or monitoring, but I know that when I had the ultra wide, I was getting a lot of headaches. I thought it was my contacts. I had changed my prescription so that one eye can see far away and the other can only see close up uh, because I'm nearsighted. So they thought maybe that was it. And that kind of helped, but I still had headaches. But I've noticed since I got the XDR, I don't have any headaches at all. And I don't have the special one that's an extra thousand that has the nano uh, covering to prevent glare because it's my own house. I never have to worry about lights, I guess, preventing or making it glary. I can just not, I like, I can just move my monitor. I can move my own lights, right? I'm not like stuck in an office or a cube. Uh, so, um, so anyway, so do I regret it? I do regret it. But now that I think about it, I don't know that I would have um, gotten rid of the headaches if I hadn't switched over to a higher quality monitor. There, I have no idea what the science is behind the nits. I think it's like they have more nits or whatever in here or the, the quality of the technology behind the monitors, but I don't have any headaches ever since I switched. Um, and I'm not someone, just so you know, I'm not somebody who gets headaches or that has ever had migraines. So getting headaches was something really new to me. Um, so Brio, most expensive subscription box ever. It was 159, but I actually liked it. I really like higher end stuff. I'm like kind of over getting those cheap, kitschy, like subscription boxes filled with a bunch of garbage. Um, I'd rather just pay more for something nicer. So you can check that out. I think I did the fall unboxing is coming next week too. Um, marketing, should you leave Etsy? Uh, I think it's time for certain people to leave Etsy. I've been on here long enough that I don't think there are a lot of beginners. I think there's some pe more advanced people that could probably benefit from moving over to Shopify. Uh, and then we talked about the age old question of should you do a coil or should you do a hard bound? Um, and then we talked about uh, live your message. I went to this three day seminar. It was free for me. But I know that it won't be free next year because I've already taken a course. So if you, I had taken like one of Marisa Murgatroyd's $2,000 courses. Um, I definitely think this is 100% great if you are a coach because she's a coach. She has a ton of coaches. There was a mastermind coaching, all things that are my idea of a nightmare. Um, but if those are something you're interested in doing because you like doing one-on-one -on -one work, you might really love this, uh, this three-day live your message. Um, Chrissy, uh, whoa. Uh, are subscription boxes a financial burden? Uh, Pamela, uh, I don't think they're a financial burden. I think they are a major financial investment. So if you do not have the money to invest in a subscription box to gather the inventory, then it's probably not something you should do. I mean, every time I think about a subscription box, I think you should do a limited run, right? Like 25, 50, 100, kind of 
your audience and you have to post like kind of pre-sell them uh, with just, hey, do you think you would buy this? Do you, do you not? And know that even though people say, yeah, I would buy it, when it comes down to it, they may never buy it. <laughs> uh, but you should 100% be okay with losing all of your inventory the first run that you do. And the reason I say that is because you're not a proven entity. Um, you may not be running any paid ads. Uh, you may not have a captive audience or you may have an audience that you thought wanted a subscription box but they really don't, or they don't like the contents in there, right? Like you might have people like me who are like, I don't want a bunch of kitschy junk. I want like high-end stuff, but it costs more to create a high-end subscription box, uh, in which case, you know, you're probably not going to get a lot of takers uh, or even if you do shirts. So for me, it's more of a financial investment up front uh, versus like, say, a burden. But I think it can be if you are... Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, Chrissy, whoa. Uh, Chrissy, I love Macs, but I use AutoCAD and on a Mac, it's a PIA. Oh, it's P. <laughs> God, I was like, what is PIA? Got it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. AutoCAD does work best on a PC. Uh, what else did I talk about? Oh, these were the worst cards ever. So <laughs> the one thing, this is actually a really good book and clearly speaks directly to me. I can only do one thing. Uh, but this was going through your core values and trying to pick cards. When I saw the advertisement for this box set, I thought there would be like, I don't know, like a definition on the back, some words of wisdom some direction in life, right? Like, right, when people buy cards or books, they're looking for some insight. Um, and so these were awful. They just said the core values on the back and they had words on the front. So yeah, uh, these were given to me for free from, uh, I don't even know, Ink and Volt. Uh, they were very cute. I don't know that, I, I thought I'd use them. Is it here? No, it's not even, I'm not even using them. I thought I would use them all the time. I never use them. Uh, so I might just recycle those. I know if you were here in local, I would just give them to you, but I pretty much, I recycled like a lot of stuff this year. Um, this, I don't know why these colors instantly made me think of McDonald's. I don't know if anyone else thought that. In fact, during the whole car, I was like, I'm kind of hungry for a Big Mac or not a Big Mac, a quarter pounder with cheese and large fries and a milkshake, chocolate milkshake. That is my McDonald's order in case you're wondering because those were the colors that they used. I don't know why. So Funnel Gorgeous is, these are the two women that did the certification that I got. Uh, very valuable. However, this Marketer's Heart is like their three-day event. And this year they had to do it virtually. And so because I, had I forgot, it was another one of those things like the Marisa Murgatroyd because I had done something else. It was like free. Um, but I did pay for the upgrade to the VIP, uh, which again, I would say neither of these, this was more like a virtual event, like a virtual summit. Definitely not worth it um, to attend, even though all their other stuff was great. Uh, this, I, this is the new camera. That's the reason the sound wasn't working. This is a brand new camera. Um, I am on the Sony A7S III even though that says A3. So there's a difference. The Sony A7 III, I think is only like $500, but the Sony A7 S3 is like 3,500. So that's the camera I'm on now. I'm in love with it. I'm super excited to try it out. I haven't recorded any videos with it. It literally just came in yesterday. Um, so I just hooked it up to do this live stream, which is also the reason I bought it. So the DSLR is, in theory, if you're thinking about doing YouTube or streaming, DSLR, they're saying, is kind of like phasing out and everyone's moving to mirrorless. Now, mirrorless is a thinner body. The DSLR, because of the way it is, it works, it has a lens in it and it has a mirror that it, it's just bigger. Um, and because of that, it's bulkier, it's heavier. But honestly, with either of these, because of the lens that I use, you could never vlog with it. I think I tried holding it up to do a pretend vlog the other day. I think I made it. 45 seconds until my arm like fatigued and gave out. Now it's possible. I should obviously go to the gym more and lift more weights, but yeah, it was just really heavy. So, um, so I am leaving, I might keep my Canon. We'll see. I'm going to try things out for a month, see how it goes and then make a decision. I think I have like 30 days on Amazon to make a return. Um, now I have tried, um, this says blogging. It really mean vlogging. It always doesn't autocorrect to the, um, 
so I sold my vlogging camera and all of my equipment because of COVID. I was like, I'm in a vlog all the time. And then I was just at home. Like no one wants to see you walking around your house. So this was 500. I would say I would never buy a vlogging camera again. Like anything that's advertised as a vlogging camera, like the Canon EOS M50, um, the Sony XR, uh, don't buy them because honestly, your iPhone works just as great. Like uh, the, the new cameras on the iPhone, and I'm sure there's another one coming out this uh, winter. It, it's going to be a thousand times better than any of these vlogging cameras. And you're going to, um, you're going to have your iPhone with you anyway. And it's lighter. It's a really heavy to carry these cameras, especially once you put like a nice lens on them. So that's my two cents in case you were thinking about it. Um, also, Sony has a clean HDMI. So you can see, and this is just a screenshot of somebody else. Um, whenever I tried to live stream with the Canon, two things would happen. One, after 20 minutes, it would just die. Um, and then second, it has it doesn't have a clean HDMI. It has all, this, all these things. You can jailbreak it and make it have a clean HDMI, but then it's like, I don't know, you get all these scary warnings that like you're breaking it. It won't be, you know, I'll, I mean, it's definitely not eligible for warranty. I have, I've had this like three years now, but I was worried it wouldn't work. And then even then it might not work. So I just said, heck with it. I'm going to try the Sony. So that's what I'm streaming on right now is the DS, is the, not the DSLR, the new camera. Um, so just things that I have to, I have an addition of buying regret. I have attendance of regret for two events this month. Um, the marketer's heart, cause I didn't get, I really got no value from that. Um, history of the mystery. I feel like I was tricked into buying this because I'm a mystery author. So I was so into like, what, uh, what's the history behind mystery writing and all of that other stuff. And it was awful. So I, in fact, I even left the mailing list. It was only like $70, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I did, I did I already did a recap of that, but I only left the house three times this month. <laughs> I really, like I was really focused on working, which is why I'm so surprised that like, I don't really have a lot to show for it. Um, I think Lauren and I went to the outlet mall, uh, and that was actually really scary to drive to the outlet mall because it is literally the last exit before you go to Mexico. And I know what you're thinking, like there must be borders or like things going on. I don't know what they show in the movies, but to drive from San Diego, like down the road, just to go from California into Mexico takes like a millisecond. There's no guards, there's no line, like going into Mexico is super easy. Coming out though, like Ben went on a fishing trip last month and coming back, I think it took him just once they got to the border to line up. I think it took him like nine hours just to make it through the border. I don't even know how I could survive for nine hours sitting in a car, but um, or how people would have enough gas. But that's that's what they did. So. So anyways, it was scary because I was like telling Lauren the whole time, I'm like, do not miss the exit. Do not miss the exit. So um, we mostly just went out shopping just to hang out because we hadn't seen each other because there's not a lot open still. Um, we had some friends in from Denver. We went to a bar. So it's like bar food. I forgot to take a picture. Um, they were in town visiting and they had their new baby. Whoops. Uh, and then I bought tickets and I forced Ben to take me to the safari park, which was kind of sad because everything was, the tram was closed, which is really the whole point of the safari park. Like there's some animals in a regular park area. And then there's the safari park where they're kind of like hanging out in theory in the wild. Uh, so the problem was um, they were all closed, but you could, it was like something crazy, like $700 to take a private tour to see the rest of the safari park. So we we opted not to do that. Um, but I don't know, I feel like maybe, cause some of those habitats were really small and you know how it says don't bang on the glass cause I guess it bothers the animals. Every single kid, I mean, I don't have kids, maybe you can't control kids. Every single kid was like banging on the glass, screaming at the animals. So I don't know, I feel like maybe they should just be left in the wild. But then there's also like, they live longer in theory in captivity. But is their quality of life really high? I don't know. These were all questions that came up when I was at the zoo. Um, let's see. Chrissy, uh, what do you think of the new Erin Condren designs? I like the A5 Daily Duo, but the designs are meh. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not really into the designs. And it feels like usually every year they have like a signature design, right? Like they had the waves, they had the kaleidoscope the year before. Um, 
they had the their typical century looking design. And so they brought back the century design. And I know that Erin Condren stepped down because of that whole uh, Black Lives Matter debacle. And so there's a new CEO. And I think the new CEO just isn't creative or willing to take a creative chance on a new design. And so we don't really have a new signature design for 2021. So I agree. Um, there's just less emphasis on design now and just more emphasis on like reputation uh, rebuilding. Uh, Tammy, are the old plan with me still available to watch on YouTube? I love them. Yes, they are all still up there. I actually haven't taken anything down. I took the video down that was up right before this because there was no sound, but otherwise everything is up. Um, so latte withdrawals, I don't know if anyone's following this, but every month I report that. So for 2021, I've given up lattes because there was like this awful Christmas incident where I was like, desperate, like crazy, like crack addict, desperate for a latte. And I couldn't find one. Um, I almost even went online and I was like, I shouldn't, this can never happen to me again. I'm going to buy one of those like $1,200 steamers and have it in the house, which there's no room for it in our tiny apartment. So um, anyways, I gave up lattes and it has been four months and I did obsess a lot in January, like all the time, like every single minute I would want to order a latte because that's like my normal thing. I like order a latte. I call up my friend Liz. We write together and like video, like virtually hang out and take little breaks and chat while I drink my latte. So that was like a huge shift. Um, so yeah. So anyway, so my point is if there was something you wanted to give up, like it gets easier over time and it's been what four months. I still haven't had a latte and at, like, I don't even think about it now. Now it's more like, I just don't drink them. Like when it comes up versus like, I did say I was trying to add fruit salad in, which I have like, for the most part, it's like an 80, 20 thing. Not every day do I eat a fruit salad. Um, but it has been like, I've been definitely incorporating it a lot more. So like, I would say at least five out of seven days a week, I have a fruit salad. Um, and that's pretty much all the changes I've made. <laughs> uh, let's see, what surprised me? So when I really thought about April and like why I haven't gotten things done, um, I'm not someone, just like I said, when I quit my job, I realized like I had to quit my job in order to start an online business and to start writing. So I'm not able to concurrently run two passion projects at the same time. That's just not something I can do. Um, I don't like leaving tasks unfinished. I am, you know, when I say there's a client that I'm working on a workbook for, I'll tell you a secret. I offered to do this job in April of 2019. It is now April of 2021, and I am now just finishing that project. So when I commit to say, do something, like I will do it. It may take me two years, but I'm going to do it. Like, I don't know why when things are like, I've said, I'm going to do something. I do it. I think it's a consistency thing, which is my number one strength. It feels like wrong or like I'm lying if I don't actually finish things. So like I've said to you guys, like there are things that I, that are on the list that I haven't done. They'll, they'll get done. I don't know if they'll get done like this summer for sure. Not this summer or this fall, but they're on there. I will still get to them at some point. Um, Deleting items, I mean, yeah, I'm not able to really delete items either. I know some people like have these long to-do lists and then the next day they're like, oh, well, I guess whatever. I didn't get to it. It wasn't that important. I really have a problem with deleting stuff and I do way too much stuff. So um, so I'm still trying to figure that out really. Uh, hiring staff, I did try to hire a couple people and it wasted so much time like training them. Um, teaching them stuff, getting them up to scale. And then like right when they were about to start going, they quit. <laughs> like I had two people that quit on me. So I kind of want to cry about it, but I've done HR for years. It happens. People change their mind. They do something else or maybe they get into it and it's not really what they wanted. Um, or maybe they just lied and they wanted all of my templates for free. So who knows? Either way, um, I am like now adverse to even trying a third time. I'm not saying I won't ever, but like right now I'm feeling a little burnt and probably not going to hire anyone ever uh, for the summer at least. Um, and scaling pretty fabulous. I'm obviously adverse to that. I don't know maybe if I subconsciously did that. I don't think I did. I really actually wanted some help. Uh, so those were kind of like things that 
just kind of came to me for this month. And I have way too many ideas. So there were so many things that I wanted to try. So I don't know if you guys, so I started a whole, I outlined a whole Shopify Academy. And that's kind of why I did that video too. Like, is it time to leave Etsy? So I thought like, maybe I could try to help people to become better on Etsy. But I don't think that's the answer because of two things. One, I now have all the know-how and wherewithal to train you on how to create your own funnels and to use Shopify to sell your products, whatever they are, on your own website and on your own store and drive traffic to it yourself. Uh, so I don't see a reason to play the Etsy game, I guess, basically, because I feel like that's easy. You stick it on there, you hope it works. And then, but you know, if you're sending traffic to Etsy, like you might get the sale or somebody else on Etsy might get the sale versus if you send traffic to your own site and you're using Shopify, which I still think is the number one over big commerce, over easy store, over any of them. Um, so I really wanted to do a course on how to do Shopify. So that took up a lot of time this month. Also, Wedding Invitation Academy. Not only did I do all the modules, I also, let me share this with you. I also created a sales page for it. Because I was just so excited about it. Hold on, let me find it. Um, where is it? Let me share. Here you go. So I was so excited. I mean, obviously, it needs some fixing for chat. But I put this whole course together on how you could make your own wedding invitations that was part of the photo shoot that's why there's so many pictures um all the modules are already like started they're not done um but i put the whole course curriculum together um i put bonuses together i didn't get to add those yet because i'm not sure what i'm gonna do i've been reaching out to a couple of people so i have like a ton of different things that i'm really excited to do for you guys the problem is there's just not enough time and so that's also part of the reason why i'm trying to change things up um just because it's just not working to try to concurrently do stuff um i'm kind of half finishing things which to me i find very frustrating i know other people are good at it uh but for me it's like really tough and i just don't know if that's gonna work long term oops where did my thing go? Um, there we go. All right. So let's just blow through the rest of these slides because there aren't that many. So what does this mean? If you're interested in Wedding Invitation Academy or Shopify Academy, those, one of those two will be rolling out soon. Again, I don't even want to commit to dates because I still have to do Planner Academy 2.0. So everything will get done. I'm just not sure when. So for calendar times, this is kind of what this looks like. Uh, I, I have another photo shoot May 14th um, with Meg, where we're probably going to focus a lot on Shopify stuff. Um, and then for that sales page, uh, and then May 30th, I have a book deadline. Actually, June 30th, I have another book deadline. And then September 30th, um, all of the calendars, they'll probably be updated before that, but that is my drop dead deadline to promise to everybody is September 30th. All the calendars that are out there, the annual, the weekly, the monthly, they'll all be updated with 2022 dates by then. Um, and again, if one of the two hires had worked out okay, they would have been done this month. So that's why I'm saying I'm just a little fright. Like I don't think I subconsciously like try to make it not work. I really wanted it to work and to get those done and out. Um, but you know, things happen. I have a setback. I don't have any staff, so it's just me. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I can just ad hoc hire somebody. I mean, it's a lot of work. I really just wanted a full-time, like, like a pseudo full-time person to really just help roll things out, all these ideas out. Um, but October 1st then is when I will return to Pretty Fabulous. So that's my plan um, pretty much going forward. Uh, let me see if you guys have any questions. Chrissy, if you change your mind, my $30 milk steamer from Amazon works almost as well as Nepresso's. Well, thank you. I've decided to stay away from lattes, but yeah, those are much cheaper than the, the really expensive steamers. Uh, Tammy, thank you. I couldn't find them on your channel, but I, I will check again later. Yeah, if you just search for plan with me, I think they should show up. They're usually right around the very last day of the month or um, I don't know if you can see dates on YouTube anymore. 
Um, but if you look, it should say like a month ago, <laughs> like there's a plan with me video. Darlene, I can't wait for the in wedding invite cards. Oh, cool. Well, thanks. Um, I mean, I can't wait to do all these things. That's also the problem. Like you have two problems issues is that, or I think I have three basic problems. One is I have a ton of ideas that I'm super excited about. Two, I also love writing books, which has nothing to do with Pretty Fabulous and book writing. Like I said, it takes up so much time. Like YouTube, I can get done. I can get like five videos done a day. I cannot write five books a day. It takes me five months to write a book almost. So that is another problem. And then um, the third problem, I said I had third problems. I'm sure I have a third problem. I don't know what it is. Oh, the third problem is I can't seem to find any help. And it's not even like my standards are that high. Like I'm willing, like I was totally willing to train people. Um, but yeah, and it was like a good salary. It was like 60,000. So it wasn't like, because I know some people were like, oh, are you trying to hire someone for $4 an hour? No, I'm not. I was like actually trying to pay like real money. So we'll see. Uh, so maybe in the fall I can get, because I was thinking too, like a backup plan is maybe in the fall uh, I can get a summer, maybe in, not a summer, a school intern, like someone who wants to do an online business, is in graphic design, maybe wants to learn. So that might be a better option. Um going forward. So, but anyways, those are my plans. Let me know if you have any questions. I, just to reiterate again, I'm taking the summer off starting tomorrow. So there will be YouTube videos because I do like doing YouTube. Um, and obviously I have this fancy new camera that I want to try out. Uh, but as far as any of the courses or anything like that, it's all still kind of on hold for the summer um, until I get those books done. And then I'll be back to do Pretty Fabulous. And again, it's just something I'm trying out. The day themes didn't work out. So I'm going to try seasons. I was going to try months, but I just, I like know already in my mind a month. I tried doing the months before and it's like not enough time because like what happens is, is as the month is ending, I'm already thinking about what I can do next. Right. And then I'm thinking about what I can do um, for the month after that. And so this way I can give myself a whole season. But yeah, so fingers crossed. We'll see if that works. And then if that works, there's four seasons in a year. So in theory, half of the year is for writing. Then half of the year is for Pretty Fabulous. Or maybe even better, someone comes on staff and can like actually do real stuff and will stay on. So we'll see. All right. I hope everyone's having a great time for their TGIF Friday and you have fun plans for the weekend. And I will see you guys. I'm sure in an unboxing because I have a lot of stuff coming to the house. And if not, I will check with you guys in the fall. Bye.